In this lesson, we'll take a look at an introduction to vectors. So first of all, what a scalar is, what a, uh, a vector is. In the top here, it says a scalar is a quantity that has only one dimension. Scalars are, are, are members of the set of real numbers. They're just numerical. They only have a size, a number associated with them. Examples of scalars are time, mass, temperature. Those are examples of scalars. They only have a numerical value. That's it. Now, vectors represent quantities that have two dimensions. Vectors have both a size, we often call a magnitude, and a specific direction. For example, uh, examples of vectors are force, velocity, and acceleration because they have a specific size and they have a specific direction. Now, if you've heard anyone debate the difference between speed and velocity, speed is a scalar because it just has a numerical quantity. For example, you're traveling 90 kilometers per hour. A velocity has a specific direction. So if you're saying you're going 90 kilometers per hour west, then that's a velocity. The size of it is just a scalar. That's speed. The geometric representation for a vector is a directed line segment, or, or a ray, R-A-Y. And these are examples of uh, vectors. A directed line segment has a beginning, uh, at this point right here, and then it has an arrow on the other end showing the direction it's pointing in. So it actually goes from point A to point B. The point it starts at is called the tail of the vector, and where the arrow is pointing towards, that point is called the head of the vector. Now we could call this the vector AB because it goes from point A to point B. The arrow symbol over top is the symbol for a vector. We can also use a single character to represent a vector too. For example, if this is a velocity vector, we might use a, a lowercase v with the arrow or vector symbol above it. The second page talks about equality of vectors. Vector AB is equal to vector CD if and only if all of these three conditions hold. The number one, the vectors have to be parallel. So here's our two vectors, they have to be parallel. Number two says that the uh, AB vector has to have the same length as the CD vector. These vertical lines here represent the length or magnitude, they look like absolute value symbols, uh, magnitude of a vector. So the two magnitudes have to be the same. They have to be the same length. And the direction, if we're talking about AB being equal to CD, the direction from A to B has to be the same as the direction from C to D. So for example, here's our two vectors. If I were to uh, draw a vector like this, I'm trying to make it the same length, but if it's in the opposite direction, it's not equal to A, B, or C, D. Even though I've tried to draw it parallel and the same length, the direction isn't the same, so that not would not be a vector equal to A, B, or C, D. In the example on this page, we're asked to identify the following vectors in the diagram. So the vector E, F would be the vector that goes from E to F, so this would be the vector E, F. GH is a vector that goes from G to H, so GH would look like that. EG would be this vector here going from point E to point G. HF would start at H and go towards F along this side of the parallelogram. And GF would be this vector right here from point G pointing towards point F. In example two, we're asked which of the following pairs of vectors are equal. GH and EF. So this is GH, this is EF. Notice that they are parallel, the same length, and they're pointing in the same direction. So they would be equal because all three of those properties from the pre previous page hold. For B here it says GF, so GF would be this vector, and EF is this vector here. And those vectors are not parallel. They might be the same length, but as soon as you get one of those properties not holding, not being true, then we can say the vectors are not equal. It says here they are not parallel. In example three, it says name a pair of opposite vectors. So a pair of opposite vectors are, for example, the uh, EG green vector here and the HF pink vector. They are opposites because they are parallel and they are the same length, but they are pointing in opposite direction. This one's going up, and this one's going the exact opposite direction. 
So the reason that they're opposite vectors, and notice I just put an AND sign between them. You shouldn't say EG equals HF because they're not equal. They're opposites. EG is actually equal to the negative of HF. Now that's not, not the only uh, pair of opposite vectors we could find in the above diagram. And we're not being restricted to just the, the five that are graphed here. We could say that uh, the uh, GH vector, and if we took the opposite of this one, the opposite direction, so the FE vector, FE and uh, GH would be opposites because GH is equal to the negative of FE. So there's another pair of opposite vectors. In the last example here, we're asked to draw a scale diagram for each of these, and we'll have to uh, take a little liberty uh, on the screen here. Different screens, of course, we won't have a constant one centimeter, but on paper, if I were drawing a uh, four Newton, and the capital N stands for Newton here, uh, that's the size of a force, uh, towards the east. So east is towards graph towards the right, north is straight up, west is to the left, and south is down. That's why it's normally the convention on paper. So if I were drawing a 4 Newton east vector, uh, I would draw it 4 centimeters long. So on my paper, I would have 4 centimeter long directed line segment. And east means it's pointing straight toward the right. In B, uh, 6.5 kilometers and NW stands for northwest, which means the angle exactly in between north and west. So there's north, there's west. So northwest would look like this. There would be a 45 degree angle between either the angle, the vector, and the west, or the vector in the north. So, and of course, I would want to draw this six and a half centimeters long. For C, three meters per second south 20 degrees towards the east means, okay, this would be straight south. So this angle right here is 20 degrees, or 20 degrees towards the east from directly south. And of course, if it's three meters per second, then I would make that three centimeters long. Now, this diagram actually talks not just about northwest, east, and south, but also about bearings. If you're doing any orienteering, for example, uh, a bearing of zero degrees means straight north. Uh, if we rotate 90 degrees, that's east. And rotate another uh, 90 degrees, uh, south is 180 degrees bearing. Another 90 degrees takes us due west, or a bearing of 270. So it's the angle from north in a clockwise direction. That's a bearing. So for example, in D here, if I were to draw a seven meter vector at a bearing of 50 degrees, the angle from, from straight north or true north, that would be the 50 degrees. And of course, I would draw this, uh, the seven meter vector would be seven centimeters long here. That's the scale we're using. If I were to um, write the, instead of northwest, the bearing for this vector, then I have to figure the angle all the way around here. And that, that would be the whole angle. So that's 90, 180, 270 to there. And then I would add four, 45 on more. So 45 and 270 works out to 315. So uh, northwest is actually a bearing of 315 degrees. And that's the end of the lesson.